All right, let's go to the demo and I will hand it over to Ophir, which is uh, with a, a product manager in our team responsible for the secure web gateway feature. So thank you, Tav. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Ophir. I'm the product manager of the secure web gateway. And today I would like to show you how easy it is to configure uh, web filter rules, uh, protect your users from web threats and enforce company policy. So the web filtering has two parts. Uh, the first part is the web console where you as admins can configure uh, the rules and policies. And the other part is the agent where your end user is going to be affected by those rules. So let's start with the web console. So we have here our new web filter rules screen where you can uh, see and manage your web filter rules. You can see here for um, some examples of rules, for instance, uh, block access to malicious sites, uh, block risky sites, uh, or warn uh, suspicious sites. You can even decide to block uh, a very uh, specific site. For instance, if you would like to block uh, Dropbox, for example, or any other IT app that you would not like your user to use in your organization, um, and so on. Another thing that you can see here is the default rule. This will going to be applied in case none of the rule uh, will be matched. Now I'd like to show you how easy it is to configure a rule. So let's click here on the add new rule. Uh, for instance, let's, let's uh, block uh, access to a news. Now I should choose uh, what will be the action. Um, so uh, we have denied that the traffic will be blocked and the user will see a blocking page. You will see it in a minute. You can choose to allow it. Uh, the traffic will just pass. And the last thing is to warn. Uh, the user will see a warning page, but still will have the option to proceed to the site. So let's choose here, deny. Source, I can choose from any user or group uh, from my tenant. Um, let's, for instance, uh, choose a jar. And then I should choose the destination. Um, I can choose from two options. I can choose from web categories. Uh, we have more than 80 categories that are being updated on a daily basis. You can see here many, many categories. Let's choose news and media. And the other approach that I can choose is also to block specific rule. Uh, let's assume that uh, specific URL, let's assume that uh, I consider Facebook as a news site. With your Facebook, and I can decide if I would like to um, block the entire domain of Facebook or even uh, just um, a specific uh, group. Okay, because I can block uh, a URL or uh, the whole uh, domain. Okay, the last thing that I can do also is to decide when this uh, rule is going to be applied. What is the time uh, range? So I can decide, for instance, to block things only on the working hours, for instance, from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. and also on the working days. That's it. Now I have a rule. I can just apply if it I want. And that's it. The last thing that I would like to show you here is that the, rule are, or the rules are organized um, by their priority. It means, and you can play with it very quickly. It means that you can, for instance, configure a more extended rule, for instance, block streaming um, to all of the company, but then exclude some specific group, uh, for instance, the marketing with a higher uh, priority rule. Now let's continue to the bypass source. The bypass source allows you to decide which traffic will be bypassed by the web filter rule mechanism. Uh, the main use cases for that is to bypass private traffic. Uh, for instance, if you would not like to look into uh, health, financial, or any other uh, sensitive information your users are, um, are using. And the other one is to deal with uh, applications that you would not like to be interrupted uh, by, the, um, by the web filtering mechanism. Now let's jump to the other part of the feature uh, where your end user is going to be uh, experienced your, uh, your feature. So uh, I decided here before to block gambling. 
Um, so let's see how it's going to look. So for instance, I am my, one of my users trying to go to the Amnigrid call. You see a blocking page and can't uh, go to that site. Another example can be to go to a worn site. And then I see a warning page, but with, a, but with an option to proceed to the site. An important thing here to see is that uh, I just need to have a working uh, agent. I, I should be connected to the tenant, but I'm not connected to a VPN network. It means that you can protect um, all of your users in the company, even though the ones that doesn't need access to uh, company resources. If you, con you can protect everyone, uh, it's an always-on protection. The last thing that I would like to show you is the web activity. You have, uh, we are logging for you all the, the blocked and uh, warned attempts, and you can see for each attempt who was the user, to which URL he tried to serve, uh, what was the action, the category, and even the rule that was applied on that attempt. That's it. I hope that you, you saw how easy it is to configure and protect your users from web threats. Thank you.